The new Indigo Disc DLC has given us that long-awaited evolution to Diplin called Hydrapple. Like myself, many people were excited for its competitive prowess with many quote-unquote credible leakers claiming it could be a bug in Dragon type, which would be a fire design for competitive Pokemon and honestly speaking from a design standpoint, it would make a lot of sense especially with the Pokemon like Hydrapple. However, Hydrapple instead was subjugated to one of the worst type combos that its other evolutions have in Grass and Dragon. With 6 weaknesses, how is a slow yet bulky Pokemon? Pokemon somehow in high viability in Smog on Singles highest tier competitive play of OU. Before we answer that particular question, if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content just like this as we're on the road to 20k subscribers. So if you guys enjoyed, be sure to join along as it also helps me know that you guys want more videos just like this. Again, I appreciate all the support and without further ado, let's get back to the video. Six weaknesses for a Pokemon is just insane, but as you guys will see later this week, weaknesses don't stop offensive dominance. Anywho, Hydrapple has a couple of key tools that make it unique compared to its counterparts. Hydrapple's stats are actually really good and it's obviously the best when compared to Flapple and Appleton. Actually, speaking of Appleton, at first glance when I saw Hydrapple, that is the first Pokemon I thought of. This is because Appleton is designed eerily similar to be a bulky slow grass and dragon type Pokemon with a 100 base special attacking stat to dish out some damage. Appleton, well, to put it lightly, hasn't been viable since its release. In fact, I forgot this was even a Pokemon until Appleton got a new evolution of Diplin, and then I remembered this thing existed. So what makes Hydrapple different and not only more viable than Appleton, but also Flapple? Well, there are a couple of key improvements that Game Freak made for Hydrapple in comparison to its counterparts. With the 55 base stat increase, this is far bulkier than Appleton was ever with the stat splits of 106, 110, and 80, which isn't just great, but is also ridiculously solid and puts it in comparison to other bulky Pokemon one such as Glowking, if not arguably better than it. It's able to wall Pokemon like Tusk, Rillaboom, Ogreporn, Wellspring Mask, King Gambit, etc. with ease as it's quite resilient defensively. Out of the Pokemon the top viability and high viability, Hydrapple can consistently wall around 15 Pokemon with I think all of them being in OU, which is just absurd for a Pokemon this weak type wise. Additionally, though and again, sorry man, but unlike Appleton, it has a much defensive ability in Regenerator. For a defensive Pokemon, Regenerator has be one of the best abilities they can have because it helps recover HP as they switch out, keeping their defensive profile up. For instance, I know it's not the same, but Glowking is a Pokemon with 4 common weaknesses within the tier. However, Regenerator allows it to be super versatile as a defensive Pokemon, not to mention its supporting moves, which is something I'll touch upon Hydrapple later. Anyways, with Hydrapple, no matter how many times you hit it with a super effective damaging move, it's able to easily quickly erase it by switching out and in, acting like nothing happened, which is super crucial for a Pokemon with this many weaknesses. I've talked enough about its defensive capabilities though, and I think you guys understand it. But Hydrapple also has a respectable high base 120 special attacking stat, which is higher than Pokemon like Greninja, and lower than Pokemon like Sandy Shocks, which is only down by like 1 point. Anyways, the point is that it is offensively competent, and even got a new signature move of Fickle Beam. Fickle Beam has to be one of the most interesting moves released by Game Freak in a while. This is a move that 70% of the time hits like a base 80 power move, which isn't so bad, but 30% of the time, this as high as a base power move of 160. And for a Dragon type move with essentially no drawback, this is pretty much insane when you especially compare to other Dragon type moves like Draco Meteor. Hydrapple is able to instantly help take advantage of its high special attacking stat as well as it helps stay in and deal solid damage as much as it wants to. Weak as 80 or as strong as 160 is just ridiculous and according to Bulbapedia, on average Hydrapple has a base power of 104, which means you'll be consistently doing high damage on average with this move no matter what. Fickle Beam isn't the only move it has though, like I said before it has Draco Meteor, Dragon Pulse, Giga Drain, Leaf Storm, Earth Power, Hydro Pump, Terra Blast, etc. You guys get the gist, it has a respectable offensive profile for a defensive Pokemon that it's supposed to be. As Diplin evolved into Hydrapple, other than Serpalm, it also gained a new powerful utility move of Yawn, which can help force switches as it threatens Pokemon to sleep and often pairs really well with Serpalm, which can slow down the opponent's side as well in addition. Hydrapple also has another form of recovery other than regenerated in the form of Recover, which can help prolong its health even more if you wish to be more tanky with leftovers variations for this Pokemon. From my times facing this Pokemon, Assault Vest has definitely been the more annoying one as it really highlights Hydrapple's unbelievable strengths. Assault Vest allows it to strengthen its weaker special defense stat while being able to dish out strong attacks. With Assault Vest, it becomes more of a pain to take down as not only it can punish you offensively, but it also can regenerate its HP as it switches out. You could say and look, well, you might not be able to use moves like Yawn or Recover, however, you do have Regenerator, so Recovery is still solid, but more importantly, it has high offenses, so increasing its bulkiness 
exchange for being more offensive, honestly speaking, isn't that bad and has been a pretty good trade so far into the metagame. And speaking of bulk, I haven't even made mention of the Terra capabilities. Terrastalization has been a huge boon for this Pokemon, allowing it to get rid of its six weaknesses in exchange for more potent defensive types like poison, water, fairy, steel, etc. So far from my experience, Hydrapple seems to be a bit less than having to be terror aligned. However, that being said, I've also had my fair share of experiences where it's had to be terror aligned, but it's worked out pretty well, especially on those AV sets which feels impossible to take down. So far from my experience, Terror Water has been the more popular one, and Hydrapple seems to be a bit less than having to be terror aligned just by a smidge. However, that being said, I've also had my fair share of experiences where it's had to be terror aligned in a lot of situations, but it's worked out pretty well, especially on those AV sets which feels impossible to take down, but I, my fears is that it will be very predictable as the time goes on. Hydrapple sure has an awful defensive typing, but it makes up for it with it being excellent everywhere else, which makes its typing so much bearable. Hydrapple has a solid recovery with the recovery and regenerator, solid utility moves, but also has pretty good stats and offensive profile all around. No matter how much we may hate on its typing, we can't all just shun on it away and try to forget everything else that makes up this Pokemon. If it was any other Pokemon, it would be an instant contention for OU, and thus for all these reasons, Hydrapple so far has been able to withstand the OU tier and be in high viability. Now again, it's pretty early and so probably due to early Pokemon Syndrome, honestly speaking, it has a lot of value to the chaotic OU tier right now. It has its downfalls for sure, but its upsides are also really big, and thus it's able to avoid its awful typing so far as of right now. In my general opinion, I think it'll be either an OU or as low as UU, but it's somewhere in between and Hydrapple has a lot of tools where it cannot be as useful in between either of these two tiers. Anyways though, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Hydrapple so far, and thank you to my members for the continued support. If you wish to support me even further, the links to my Patreon and YouTube membership are down below. Comment down below the Apple emoji, be sure to join the Chompy Discord. Other than that though, thanks for watching as always.